Yeah, we have one or two amplifiers, um, ones we've collected over the years. Um, there are quite a few more in the corridor we'll see later, I'm sure. Well, my main go-to is AC30 is an also an AC15, great for clean guitar, great if you crunch them. This is uh, essentially a power brake that I had built for me by a clever guy called Dennis Marshall um, mm. out in Dunfermline, um, which has a treble plate in it to uh, accommodate for the treble drop when you when you mm. essentially attenuate right. the volume down. So it allows you to drive this all the way without shaking the house or, <laughs> or the back off the amp. Yeah. Sometimes when you drive these too far, you will get a lot of rattles, mm. um, but this just allows you to control it a little bit more. Fender Twin, fairly self-explanatory. We've got a couple of these along with the Devel in the back. Very nice reverb, very good clean sound. Again, great if you really drive them all the way. Yes. Very, very loud if you do that. JTM, um, Great little Marshall combo again, gives you a fair bit of grunt if you push it. The secret weapon, um, looks like an old Fender or some sort of booty camp, it's actually a PV Classic 50. PV more known I suppose for their sort of heavy metal rock yeah. amps and very reliable ones at that. They've made a couple of tweedier amps, Classic 50 and the Delta Blues I think. Uh, they were very kind, they gave me one of these in the uh, mid 90s. Um, and uh, always surprises everybody when you yeah. say oh I'll try plugging into the PV and they think I'm going to give them a Eddie Van Halen yeah. style <laughs> um, uh, it, it's a great really versatile um, um, but does does that very sort of classic sort of tweedy reverb um, mm -hmm. combo Ampeg cab with the uh, we also have an SVT and a um, couple other bass amps as well but uh, just the sort of classic 8, 8x10 Ampeg cab this orange, uh, I really like on bass actually. Um, we inherited that when we came in here and actually swapped out, took the SVT away and put this back in. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit more grunt to it, yeah. um, a little bit more character, I think. This is a dual rectifier, um, custom spray painted badly with a, an old Idleworld album cover. Uh, make another world, I think. Um, this was used quite a lot on the early records. Um, that very sort of modern rock, things like Modern Way of Letting Go, very chunky kind of driven rock guitar sound. Mm -hmm. uh, use it less so now, but whenever anyone's in who wants that kind of chunky big cab, this is straight away. Um, as you can see on the cab, a bunch of our cabs in here will have this um, little bit of tape on them just to mark a where when we've white noised the amps, so sending white noise from the console through the uh, the cabs or the combos, moving a mic around with a pair of headphones or someone mm. in the control room to find the best picture of that white noise because um, you've got a full spectrum. When you find that then you know that's the place that if you want to capture exactly what's coming out of the cab that should be the best place for it. On here I know straight away if I want that aggressive full on uh, sound of this amp an MD421 placed right here just does that. Um, whether we then want a room mic as well to complement that, mm -hmm. we can we can talk about that a bit later as well. Yes. A bunch of other toys and amps in the corridor, which I'm sure we can have a have a look at now, along with our guitar collection. Excellent. Cool. Mainly some of the gigging ones that I usually take out on the road if we're out. Three tellies, all for different tunings mainly. A couple of older SGs. This is an older '70s SG with a big B. The plate has come off and stays stored away carefully somewhere. Yes. Okay, <laughs> lose it on the road. This one is the Sort of the crown jewels uh, at the moment, although I keep all the original parts for it, there's a Seymour Duncan in at the bottom, just gives it a little bit extra grunt. Um, this is again the sort of go to when someone comes in and wants that kind of big rock mm. guitar through the mesa. This Harmony Rocket I picked up recently in Brooklyn when I was over, you know, that's top jazz tone. Um, I think Harmony started as catalogue guitars originally. Mm -hmm. um, they um, became fairly popular, um, fairly unknown over in the UK as much, I think. Um, I saw it in the window in a, in a shop in Brooklyn when we were on tour last. Yeah, I just decided I had to have it and uh, yeah, ditched mm -hmm. my suitcase and just brought this up <laughs> instead. Um, much better idea. Much better idea. But yeah, this is sort of mostly the touring stuff that I take with me. Obviously here when we're when we're at home, which is most of the time these days. Yeah. Acoustics. This rarely gets used in here. To be <laughs> so acoustic basses rarely do. Twelve string tachymini, which is 
you know, um, slightly more modern if you want a 12 string that mm -hmm. does that thing. Another job. Um, this Martin had a bit of a knock unfortunately, um, but so currently gets used as a, a, a job guitar. It's strung with the high strings of a 12 string, which is a Nashville thing. Okay. Um, so that you can essentially get the vibe of a 12 string, but split it um, mm -hmm. into two, get a bit more ragged. I think Wild Horses uh, they did that with. Um, so it's essentially just, yeah, the thin and strings are a octave above. Um, so you play it once with the normal set up and then once with this and then pan them left and right. Yeah. An old mahogany guild, uh, again needs a little bit of TLC, it's taken a bash but let's go into the fixer. <laughs> yeah. Um, never lend your guitars to anyone is the oh, no. moral of that story. And then uh, the jumbo uh, 185 that um, Gibson very kindly gave me in the 90s. Mm. Um, very big sounding. Um, tricky to record actually I find this one but uh, Again, was more of a road touring guitar for me, but uh, um, very nice, big, big, nice low end for an acoustic. Um, this actually little acoustic uh, made by Farida, a UK company. Mm -hmm. uh, again, they contacted me a while ago and asked if I wanted to try a few things, and I had a look at this one and thought I don't have a parlor, I'd love to give it a try. Funnily enough, it's become the Go to um, acoustic in here for record. It records really, really well. Mm. It's lovely to play. Um, in fact, I, I just had to email them yesterday and put them in touch with three or four people who've come through saying, "Can I get one?" Yeah. Um, they're currently having a problem I think, because Rosewood is some new rules on Rosewood course, being yes. imported, so they're having a problem making them fast enough. Um, but yeah, it's become a really popular guitar. Again, just a few other standards: standard P bass, Tele. Um, the Coronado, which again, is a similar thing to the, the Harmony, it's a little bit more reliable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Strat, again, I, was, I thought I would never play a Strat when I was a younger man, I was, I was always a bit anti Strat and Les Paul. Right. That was yeah. pretty much give me something different, but mm -hmm. um, as I get older, the more and more I seem to use it. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. This is actually a Squire P bass, but made uh, in Japan in the 80s. Uh, it's a friend of ours has loaned it to us. Um, 81 to 83, uh, I think Squire were making um, their bases in the Japanese factory and making them so well that I think Fender told them to stop. Oh, right. Them. Uh, so anything um, anything with the JV serial number by Squire from the 80s is worth getting your hands on because they sound fantastically good. 64 Jaguar has had a bit of a beating. I Bought it without really knowing that it was a 64 um, because it got a bit of a steal on it and back in the back in the mid 90s uh, probably threw it around a little bit too much. Mm. Um, it's slowly getting restored. <laughs> <laughs> Sits in a very different space than any other guitar. Mm. Um, you know, if you're struggling to get a lead part to cut through everything else, that that's quite often the go-to. It just they do occupy a very sort of short, different space. Again a Farida that they uh, gave me very chunky, great for sort of rhythm mm -hmm. rock guitars. Um I can't remember the model number I'm afraid. Um and then P ninety Melody Maker, which again we inherited when we moved in. Um very yeah, another just a another sort of classic Gibson tone. I'm uh, Less, as I say, Les Paul fan over the years. Uh, the the special and the the uh, melody maker, one of the few that I'll play. Yeah. Um, less top heavy as well. Of course, uh, yes. And uh, gives it a bit of character. The P nineties. This old Russian string synth. Um, we had to spend some time translating <laughs> what everything <laughs> meant because it's all in Russian, obviously. Um, but uh, from what from what we can work out, there's a string synth, an organ synth, and a and a and just like a normal uh, synthesizer um, you can program. A couple of old Korg synths as well, and the Dave Smith Mofa, which is mm. really great. Um, complicated to program, I find, but uh, but really, I use it a lot for sub stuff. It's got some really great sub synths mm. in it. And a few more amps, my touring AC15, which um, I started touring more because it was less heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then discovered I preferred it to the AC30 I had. Um, so um, it's got a really nice uh, spring reverb on it as well, which um, 
one of my favourites actually. The Meta Lone Star, which again is part of my touring setup. Again, you'll see where we've white noised it. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a uh, does a bit of everything really. Actually, it's a great, great amp. It gives a bit more of a tweedy sound than than, than some of Messer's amps. Got can drive, select each channel to be on 50 or 100 watts as well, which is great. Um, gives you a bit, a bit of extra tonal options. Um, again, can be driven to give you a really big, fat sort of rock guitar sound, but also can give you a bit more of a sort of classic kind of tweed. Um, nice clean nice reverb as well so it's uh, yeah really good sort of all-rounder to take on tour started to use it more and more in the studio as well actually for another just another another option for a driven gain sound when you're not wanting to layer too many fuzz pedals and yeah um yeah full of really good options um weighs a ton <laughs> Get someone to carry it for you. That was a tour of Post Electric Studios and there's going to be another video where we record some guitar and I'll see your processes doing that. Yeah, um, hopefully it'll be understandable or not too boring as I rattle on about phase. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to see that please make sure you subscribe to the channel and, uh, and keep looking out for that coming out. And once again thank you very much thank you. Uh, for having me here and um, just tell the lovely people where you can be found? Um, we can be found by uh, coming to Leith uh, in the north of Edinburgh or just looking online at postelectricstudio.com. Excellent. Keep it loud, guys, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>